Good morning. Our resurrected Christ has come to us saying, peace be with you. Our resurrected Christ comes to us saying, here are the marks on my body. Jesus breathes the Holy Spirit on us. Christ's peace is with us. We don't need to be afraid. Let us worship with joy. I was listening to someone say that Easter was last Sunday and it was over. I was ear hustling a little bit, but the beauty of being the people of God is that Easter, in fact, is with us this Sunday. So we get to celebrate Easter this Sunday and next Sunday and the Sunday after because we are people that believe Christ is risen, risen indeed. Our guiding vision here at United Church of Hyde Park is we are a diverse Christ-centered people learning together and reaching out to serve the community in faith, hope, and love. Christ has risen. Welcome, welcome to United Church of Hyde Park. If you are visiting with us or relatively new, we encourage you to fill out a card in the pew, yellow or blue, and you can put that card in the offering plate during offering time. We have communion today, and we'd just like to remind our online community to please prepare your communion elements. Also today, we will be entering for the first time since COVID full communion. How exciting. And so we invite those that are at home to prepare and be ready to join with us in communion. We'd like to welcome our guest soloist, who is no stranger to us, Benjamin. It's good to have you back again and again. Just a reminder that after service today, uh, at 1 o'clock p.m., the Audrey family cordially invites United Church of Hyde Park members and friends to a memorial service to celebrate the life of Mr. Cal Audrain today at 1 o'clock p.m. Contemporary issues will meet this week. They will be discussing, continuing to discuss the book Solito um, on Thursday, April 11th at 11 a.m. Please save the date. The quilt show is back, but it's meeting in a different location, Saturday, April the 20th and April 24th. There's more information on the bulletin and there will be more information to come out. The quilt show is back. If you are wanting to get in contact people, with people and you want an updated UCHP directory, please uh, let us know and we will get an updated directory to you. You can call into the office. And just a reminder today to join us for coffee av- hour after worship. Every first Sunday we celebrate birthdays. And so today we will be celebrating the birthdays that are in the month of April. We have a special birthday cake. We'd like to wish a special happy birthday to Bertha Kankuma. She will be celebrating her big birthday this Tuesday, April 9th, and Prentice Bradford, who will be celebrating his big day Saturday, April 13th. I want to welcome you, welcome you. It is still Easter. Christ has risen, risen indeed. I want to welcome you to United Church of High Park. sense his presence and I knew this was a place where love abides for this is a temple the God we love abides here. Oh, we are standing in his presence on holy ground. We are 
stand me stand stand me please stand and join me in the call to worship the word of love life spoke so we could hear the alleluia's of the angels the word of life reached out so we could touch the hope which heals us the word of god life walked out of death's dread tomb so we could follow him into life forever. Please remain standing as we sing together hymn 454, Open My Eyes That I May See. Glimpses of truth thou hast for me. Place 
Let us pray our prayer in the bulletin together. Holy One, we gather with grateful hearts to remember the blessings of your light and love and love as they flow through our lives each day. In this moment, open our hearts to your Holy Spirit. Open our minds to the truths of your story. Open our hands to welcome the risen Christ amongst us and and open open our our eyes to your your glory, a glory glory reflected reflected in the faces around us. In the the name of the the risen Christ, Christ, we pray. pray. Amen. Amen. Receiving the Holy Spirit and sharing the love of the risen Christ with one another, peace be with you. And also with you. Let us share peace with one another. be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love, the fellowship of kindred minds is like to Testament lesson is from the Gospel according to John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. Listen for the word of God. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, 
receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, the disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we sang earlier in the service today, opening our eyes. Please do open our eyes and open our ears and open our hearts and open our understanding. Your word is so beautiful and complex that two people could be sitting in the same place and hear something different but what they needed to hear. And so open us up to possibility, open us up to inspiration, and open us up that we might hear from on high. In Jesus' name, amen. Sermonic title today is We Are a Family, part two. I'd like to use as a subtitle, Show up, show up. Nada grew up in a two-parent family home. She grew up in a community long ago that was close-knit and neighbors believed in hands-on love. I want you to use your imagination there. She also grew up in a community that talked, or shall I say gossip, in her teen years she started to hear other people in her community say that her dad really wasn't her biological dad, but that her dad was another man on another street that she looked just like. She wasn't ready to quite tell her mom this information that she had heard, and so she kind of kept it to herself for a couple more years, but it danced in her head, could that be my dad? One day in her adult life, she found the nerves and the courage to ask her mom, Mom, is this person people are saying is my dad, my real dad. Her mom was emphatic, no, that is not your dad. The man that has raised you is your biological dad. Nada left it alone, went on living her life, but people would continue to gossip, people would continue to say it. And this other family, they treated her as though she was a part of their family. They would invite her to gatherings. They were like, you are our kin. We know you are related to us. And so after a period of time, she went back to her mom. But every time that Nada went back to her mom, her mom would be emphatic. This is not your dad. Don't listen to what people say in the streets. The man that raised you is your biological dad. As life goes, the dad that raised her died. As life goes, her mom died. And as life goes, eventually, the dad that was called her biological dad 
was ending the near of his life. Nada thought to herself, with her mom dead, maybe I should really look into this. And so Nada decided to do a DNA test. And guess what? Nada find out. The gossip was true. This man across the street, down the street, was really her biological dad. These people that had claimed she was related to them were, in fact, her people. It made all the difference in the world to her. But it also changed her. She began to think, what was her mother trying to prove? Why had her mom lied to her? Why had her mom been so emphatic that this man was not her dad? Nada found finding out where she really was from raised more questions. Nada decided from that moment on to never take people at their word. You have to show me. This is where we enter the biblical text today. According to John and Mary, they had seen Jesus. According to the Gospel of John, Mary had seen Jesus. And it was long before, and it wasn't long before he made a second appearance. And there were these other disciples that saw Jesus. And each of them were gathered in the room with others that hadn't seen him. And they were giving their twist on the story of seeing Jesus in wonder and amazement. You know, when you've been present for something, you just got to get in how it happened, how it appeared. This is what I saw. Reports of being with Jesus and seeing him alive in an empty tomb and the stone being rolled away. Thomas was not there, but he listened to the disciples explain what they saw and what they had heard. Thomas kind of was like Nada. For many of us today, if we're honest, that's a hard pill to swallow. It's a hard pill to swallow that a man died on Friday. We buried him, we put him in clothes, and three days later, he got up. And yet for Thomas, this was a hard pill to swallow. And so Thomas concluded, unless I see the nail holes in his hand, put my finger in the nail holes, and stick my hand in his side, I don't believe what y'all saying. In other words, like, Nada, you got to show me. Anybody willing to be honest that sometimes you feel like you got to show me? We live in a world where sometimes it feels like everyday good people are preyed on. All kinds of scams come in the mail. This week I got a notification that my package was on the way. But guess what, y'all? The label fell off, and all they needed me to do was click on the link and provide my address. Now, I thought to myself, if you all are the carrier somewhere in your system, you should be able to find my mail. I mean, you should be able to find my address. Maybe they didn't get me, but I bet you they got someone with that scam. I bet you someone took an aid and got it. The alderman's office works real close, I learned, with seniors around the south side Bronzeville being targeted for scams. We hear the story of people investing their life savings with what turns out to be Ponzi schemes. Good people getting taken advantage of, from love to packages, empty words, and promises. I don't know about y'all, but you're going to have to show me. Take time, Thomas said, to show me so that I can believe too, because it just ain't flying with me what Mary and the disciples are saying. Showing up, taking time to help people get to a space of belief. Ruby Frank and her counselor, Jolie Hillerbrandt, thought two of her kids were possessed by the devil. From their perspective, they were trying to get the devil out of these two kids. They did some extreme things. From the world's perspective, they abused these two kids. When the police arrived to a $5 million home complex based on the boy's testimony, who escaped, They are looking for his sister in this house. They search the whole complex over and they can't find her until they walk into a walk-in closet. And there is a girl sitting Indian style, still on the the floor. They speak to this girl sitting on the floor. They don't recognize the girl because her hair has been cut off. She says nothing back. She asks about the abuser, Jody. Where, Where is Jody? She never moves from her position. They finally offer her pieces. Pizza, something that resonates with her. She eats a whole pizza and half of another. 
They bring in a specialist to talk to her. It takes four hours for them to talk that girl out of the closet because she needed someone to show before she could believe that she was okay. It didn't matter that the first person that walked in said, I'm the police, I'm here to help you. She needed someone to show her. Sometimes people go through things in life and they just need somebody to show, to show up. The disciples are scared. They're looking, they're locking themselves up in the house. They're keeping a very low profile. We don't talk about that. The powers kill Jesus. They're scared. If they kill Jesus, what could they possibly do to us? Could we be next? This was a traumatic experience before it went good. The grief is so thick, visibility is a zero. We are three days into mourning the death of Jesus. And now you want to tell me you saw Jesus walking around? Does that not sound crazy to somebody? You want to label me as the doubter? Make me the bad guy for questioning? When was the last time one of your family members got up three days later? I mean, this stuff doesn't happen every day. Yeah, maybe folks die and come back in minutes. But we're talking dead, dead, wrapped in cloth and laid away with a tomb, stone in front of a tomb. Call me what you want, but if you want me to be a believer, you're going to have to do more than talk. You're going to have to show me. People of God, we are living in a time period where people need us to show them. Words, they don't matter. Politicians and pastors, they speak such beautiful words. I know I'm standing here, right? Speak such beautiful words, but you got to show me. We want our elected officials in our churches to show us. We want our jobs in our hospitals to show us. We want our families and our friends and our loved ones to show us. We are running a deficit, we think, in money, but really we're running a deficit in people showing up and caring for one another. Deidre always wanted to be a mommy. This year she gave birth to a baby boy with Down syndrome. It took a minute. There was deep hurt because when we think about having a baby, we think of the baby being a certain way. This wasn't the baby that she envisioned, but once she got around it, she realized the most important thing for her to do was to show up for her baby. She found another Down syndrome boy older to be a role model. Now her baby's quite young, but she's excited. She shows him this video of this other younger toddler that has Down syndrome. She wants him to know there are heroes in the world that look like him. She shows up because that's what you do. Sometimes you have to get across town. Sometimes you have to cry. Sometimes it takes a while emotionally to get there. But it's important that we show up. Jesus shows up to meet Thomas where he is. It was eight days later when Jesus shows up. Thomas had some time to roll around in his head what others had said to him to kind of wrap his mind around it. Jesus walks right in and greets everyone and then he focuses on Thomas. He dresses Thomas, take your finger, Thomas, and examine my hands. Take your hand, Thomas, and stick it in my side. Don't be unbelieving, Thomas, believe. Jesus didn't have to come back eight days later for Thomas. And Jesus didn't have to show Thomas a thing. But he met Thomas where he was. And that's good news. Maybe if we meet people where they are, we might be able to bring people along as the body of Christ. Jesus had this canny ability to meet folks where they were on the journey. He met the woman at the well. He met the people at the wedding right where they were. Sometimes we want people to be on our page. We want them to see it as we see it, to operate and behave as we do, to draw and operate inside the lines. But what if we showed up where people are? What if we met people where they are? Stop trying to get them to be where we are. Take the time to get across town. And let's stop shaming people for not being where we think they should be. Doubting, faithless. Just get to where they are. Because our world needs people to show them more than anything else. Words, my friend, are cheap. I remember this ethic class I took. Very on, 
very early on in my seminary education, the teacher in this ethics class asked us before she started her class, what were the obstacle, obstacles to God for us in this class? That meaning, what were the things that, would, that we, would, we were doing as students in the class that would prevent others from accessing God? Well, we have one person in the class that cursed like a sailor. So one person raised their head and said, profanity. Profanity blocks me from accessing God. So we agreed, the whole class, no more profanity. We're not going to curse in class. But I remember this one sister from Korea. She said it was he language for God. I had heard professors talk about expanding our vocabulary and gender understanding of God. But when this girl broke down that because she had been through domestic violence, using he language for God made her see God as violent. And so we agreed in this class that we would not use he language for God. I did one better, and I've committed to not use male language for God since that class. In that class, I learned sometimes we make changes in our own behavior to show up for others. A lot of times we comment and feedback and people want different things because they want to be able to access God in the worship experience. Years ago, early in my career, I did therapy with the girls in a group home. These girls were traumatized and severely mentally ill. They lived in a home together. And so there was this one girl I met with. She was very suspicious of therapy. And week after week, we met together. And week after week, she was hostile. And week after week, she didn't say anything. And week after week, I felt like a horrible therapist. I was also young and inexperienced, too. Nothing I tried, none of my education, none of my masters in social work helped me to break through to this girl. And then we realized she needed to be transported to see her dad in jail. This girl had lost her mom. She went off with a religious cult, and her mom never came back again. She began to be raised by her grandmother. She was angry. Nobody knew where her mother was. Her dad was in jail for a serious crime. She was cut off from the two people she loved the most. We found out her dad was in jail three hours of the way. And guess who got to drive her? Moi. On the first couple of drives, she commented on my driving. She was not impressed. <laughs> three hours, one way in a car, in a van with someone, you start talking. And everything I had tried to do in therapy happened on that van ride. On the ride back after we had seen her dad and eaten the snacks in jail that they provide, she would talk some more. We would get home about 6, 7 o'clock that evening. I later learned that driving three hours to the prison and staying in the prison two hours and driving three hours home translated to her as showing up. It translated as love. I would have never guessed that I would have still been in that room doing therapy, trying to get through. None of my fancy therapeutic skills would have worked. But she taught me something on that day. Sometimes we have to show up where people are. Eight hours communicated love. Sometimes we have to show up where people are in ways that are not comfortable to us. Sometimes to show up for people, we have to do things and we have to make changes in our own life. Sometimes to show up, we have to reappear. We have to drive across town. We have to drive miles to get to where people are. We have to be vulnerable. We have to appear in the darkness and the doubt. We have to meet people where they are. Jesus Jesus met Thomas where he was. Thomas, touch me. Feel the nails in my hand. And because Jesus met Thomas where he was, Thomas believed in the resurrection of Jesus. And Thomas' response was, my master, my God. Amen. Shall we pray? Dear Lord, thank you for showing up. You have shown up to so many of us, and you have met us on the mountaintop and in the valleys 
You have met us in hospitals. You have met us in some awkward places. And we'd like to express deep gratitude for showing up, for meeting us where we are. That's what resurrection power is all about. Help us, Lord, in our own journey as Christians, as followers of Christ. Help us to show up for others. Help us to get there. Help us to be uncomfortable. Help us to show up so that others might believe. In Jesus' name, amen. I'd like to extend an invitation just so people know if you're a visitor, if you are looking for family. It's not always easy to find family. I'm not talking about biological. But if you're looking for a spiritual family, if you're looking for people to show up for you, then you might want to consider becoming a part of this faith community. It's something to think about. We're small. We see you. We try to show up for people. So if you're thinking about family, well, pray on it. And consider, consider becoming a part of United Church of High Park. Amen. Amen. Sunsets and seasons and streams Like our dreams come and go But he is the peace in our lives That survives for we know He is forever and ever and ever he is the Lord of peace. He is forever and ever and ever will cease.
it is offering time and for the month of April we are not only doing our general offering but we are taking up one great hour of sharing this is a hunger disaster development program providing relief from natural disasters food for the hungry and support for the poor and oppressed so we ask you to consider giving to the special offering or just the general offering Jesus has empowered us we have life because of his presence with us. Let us join in God's abundance, giving what we can to show up to a hurting world. God of resurrection, help us use these gifts to offer hope where there is sorrow, peace where there is chaos, and love where there is fear. We can do incredible things because your spirit lives within us. Amen. If you are watching us on live at home, it is time to get your elements out. As we prepare to do communion today, it is our practice to enter into a prayer, just as we prepare ourselves for communion. That prayer can be found in your bulletin, the prayer of transformation and new life. Let us read together. Loving God, you restore us to each other and to you, mending our hearts and repairing the world. Through the power of your spirit, you shape us to be for others what Christ is for us, pardon and peace, new life and blessing. We give you thanks for your love, forgiveness, and constant presence. Amen. I am the bread of life. With the words spoken by Jesus, you who come to me shall not hunger. You who believe in me shall never thirst. May God be with you. Lift your hearts. 
let us give thanks to the God we love. Jesus shared a meal with the disciples. And this meal that he shared with the disciples, he knew that his life was almost at the end. Sometimes we can know things and it brings a different perspective when we're sharing a meal with someone. So as he gathered the disciples to share this space with him, some of you have pictures in your home of the disciples around the table with Jesus. As they share this meal, I often wonder what was going through Jesus' mind because he knew this probably was the last meal that he would share with them. He invited them because they were his family into community to share a meal together. We rejoice in Jesus Christ, the only one eternally begotten by you, who was born of your servant Mary and shared the joys and sorrows of life as we know it. We remember Christ's death we celebrate Christ's resurrection. And in this beloved community, we wait for Christ to return again. We take courage from the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit in our midst. We offer our praise for witness in every age to God's love and justice. Today, we proclaim holy, holy, holy God of love and majesty the whole universe speaks of your glory, O God, most high. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We remember that in the midst of this family gathering, there was a sense of betrayal and desertion that was on the door hinge. In that moment, betwixt between family and desertion and praying. Jesus took the bread and gave thanks, broke it, and said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the same meal, Jesus took the cup of the new covenant and poured it out amongst the disciples. This is my new covenant poured out for you. Do this in remembrance of me. By eating this bread and drinking this cup, we proclaim Christ's death. We celebrate Christ's resurrection and we wait for Christ to return. Gracious God, we ask you to bless this bread and cup and all of us with the outpouring of your Holy Spirit. Through this meal, make us the body of Christ, the church, your servant people, that we might be salt and light and leverance for the furtherance of your will in all the world. Amen. I'd like to invite my servers to come up at this time. Should we have June take those out? So please, at this moment, just understand that you can either come up if you feel comfortable to either station and you will be served. If you are unable to come up, we will come to you. Um, also, you can take 
This is called, by intention, you take a piece of bread, you dip it into the juice, and then you put it into your mouth. They will hold it for you. If you don't feel comfortable with that, we still have cups where people can take their own cups and serve themselves. Come for all things are ready. We need them to have. We don't want to take the whole thing. You want one of these? Can I take So they can go out. Can I get you all to switch place? Just switch place, switch place. Then they can go out. They can go out. <laughs> Have you been served? Yeah. You've been served? Yeah, we have. Have you served each other? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have okay. you two taken? No. Did you serve? Did you serve Joe? Did you have served Joe? Have you been served? No. Yes. We that's what served Joe. Yeah. Have you been served? Has everyone been served? Let us pray. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Jesus Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world in courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen.
We come to the part in our service where we get to check in with one another. This is community check-in time. If you have something you want to share, something that makes you happy, something that makes you sad, something you want us to pray about, something you're concerned about, something you're overjoyed about, an accomplishment, please raise your hand and we'll bring a mic to you. Ina Grace. As I speak, my sister Catherine is in the hospital in Peoria awaiting an emergency appendectomy. So she's a little younger than I am, but not much. So I wish all our prayers for her. Lifting up Ina Gray's sister, who's waiting for our appendectomy as we speak. Come Holy Spirit. Anybody else? Uh, this gentleman in the back, you please tell us your name, and then Marsha down in the front. My name, my name is Demetrio Brown, and uh, I live in the area. Uh, I have a coworker that I'm very close to. Just had a colonoscopy and found out she has colon cancer. She is 41, so I want to get some prayer for her. Lifting up a coworker who had that every 10-year colonoscopy and discovered that she had colon cancer. We lift her up um, at this time. Come Holy Spirit. Thank you. Any, uh, Marsha, raise her hand and then Wei Jin. Um, I have a, a joy that my friend Barbara chose to come again this Sunday and she's very happy here. And, um, and then I have a concern. I have three doctor appointments this week, one Monday, one Wednesday, and one Friday, and pray that they all uh, are productive and uh, don't have any more problems than I do already. <laughs> Happy to have friends that come to church with us and prayers for your visit with all three doctors this week. Come Holy Spirit. And Barbara has something she wants to say herself. I want to praise the... Our Heavenly Father, for the healing and recovering of my nephew, Russell, from triple bypass surgery on his heart. So I thank him for his blessings and for answers to prayer. Barbara, thank you for sharing that with us. A praise report that your nephew is doing good, has recovered. Praise the Lord. Anybody else? Oh, Wei Jin, Wei Jin. Uh, as you know, there's a earth and uh, fortunately my family they are just fine, and um, but there's still some people missing um, in different area than island. We still keep uh, there in our prayer, and thank you for all your uh, concern asking. And uh, my all summary went well last uh, uh, last Monday, so uh, today is my seven days as a citizen of this country. I'm working on that. <laughs> Okay, Maurice. <coughs> two things. I have, event, I have two events coming up for, uh, for soccer. And I got one for voting. Um, I got one for um, bowling. I did not vote. I mean, bowling mostly. I got 81. This afternoon, at 3 o'clock, I was one of my, my, my favorite team. South Carolina going to beat our. South Carolina going to beat our. I was South Carolina. Don Sam is one of the best coaches in women's baseball today. She made me myself being the best. So she made me uh, me because uh, I'm the best. She's the best. So good work, good work, South Carolina. And hope you own me and mother same silk because I'm going for mine and running. So you have good, good work, South Carolina. And you come, the men, you come, come in the national championship for the fifth time. Amen. Amen. It is so good to see you, Maurice. Praise the Lord. Uh, uh, right there beside you, too. Tracy, right there beside you. Good morning, everybody. I want to, let's see, there's lots of need for prayer for healing this morning. And I want to lift up my mom who had surgery, so just want to send her showers of energy of healing as she continues to heal. 
And also wanted to share a joy. My littlest one who's not here this morning was in a squash competition this morning. He did very, very well. He's the youngest one there, so it's just really a joy to see him flourishing and having a great time, getting to spend time with his brother. So just want to share a joy that they're doing well and just good energy. Thank you for sharing Mom's Coming Through Surgery and Tristan, Tristan Play Squash. It is doing good. That's good to hear. Thanks for sharing that joy. I think this sister right here is raising her hand beside Ann. I guess I'd just like to thank this church for being such a good home for my brother Cal and his family. Amen. Come Holy Spirit. Hear our prayer. Hear our confession. Anybody else? Yeah, for the healing Josephine? and the health. Oh, for the healing and the health of everyone and for my building to be quiet and that the people are helpful, healthful, and considerate of everyone in the building. Healing and health and quietness in your building. Come Holy Spirit. <laughs> Hear our prayer. I also want to shout out just a gratitude for my son. Um, a lot of times, I, I think I've shared with you guys, I'm a bag lady. And uh, my bags have gone from me carrying them to him <laughs> carrying them. And so a lot of times he doesn't complain. I get to church and I'm like, can you carry my bags? <laughs> so um, I got four more years, so I'm going to have to learn how to decrease bags. But just grateful for the ways in which he reaches out to help. Thank you, Josiah. Anybody else? Oh, okay. Go ahead and tell us your name. Yeah, I'm Ashley, and Ashley. I just wanted to share praise for the world that God made in that there's an eclipse tomorrow and that a lot of people are able to see it. So that's an exciting thing for people to appreciate. Just sharing gratitude that we might be able to appreciate the solar eclipse tomorrow. How many of you are planning on? Okay. Got some young people over here. Anybody else? Maybe Tracy? Okay, okay, Diane? Okay, Josiah, Josephine? Okay, well, Josiah doing it, I'm doing it too. So for those of you that didn't know, hey, something you might want to do tomorrow is uh, try to check out the solar eclipse. Anybody else? Okay, let us, let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this space to share a portion of what is on our heart. We thank you we can share our doctor's appointments. We can share what the church has meant in the life of our loved one who is now an ancestor. We can share the joy of watching our kids grow up. We can share our concern for family members who are about to go into surgery. We thank you that no matter what is on our heart, we can drop it off here at this altar. Come Holy Spirit. Now we pray the prayer that you taught the disciples and we pray in the language that feels most comfortable to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Remember, right after the closing hymn and benediction, we will be having a birthday celebration for birthdays in April. We have a birthday cake. We'd love for you to stay behind. That might help you to get to 1 o'clock. We know that we have a memorial service for Cal Audrain as well at 1 p.m. today. These are your announcements. Let us rise together and sing the closing hymn, Thine Be the Glory, hymnal 308.
Beloved, go in peace, and go be peace. Receive the Holy Spirit deep in, your bearing, deep in your being, and share your new life in Christ with the world. Show up. Amen. <laughs>